All right, point number two. When you see an expression like this, it is a curve. It corresponds to a curve. There is no way to close our eyes to that interpretation. Here is, here is why. Let's pick an arbitrary origin once again. And so we have u of alpha. Well, u of 1, I'll start with 1. I could start with 0, but doesn't matter. I'll start with 1. u of 1 is some vector. Let's draw it. Here it is. Here is u of 1. u of 2 is also some vector. Let's draw it. u of 1.5 is also some vector. If it's a reasonable vector function, then that vector would be somewhere here. Now let's draw u of 1.25 in between. Well, if it's a reasonable function, it would fall somewhere here. And so if we collect all of the tips of the vectors, we can't help but notice that they trace out a curve. We can't ignore that curve. It's there. Just like when we have a function, we can't really ignore its graph. We, we can't pretend that it doesn't exist, but it's a natural pairing. So when you have a vector-valued function, it is a curve. That geometric interpretation is right there. And after all, we're all about geometric interpretation. If this was a differential geometry class, I would start with this and then say, we can think of a curve as a function of a parameter. OK. One couple interesting notes that I can make about this. First of all, I've been saying over and over again that we don't want coordinates. We don't want a coordinate system. We want to treat objects on their own terms. We want to treat them in the way they deserve to be treated. And we're doing that. Right? We're still just drawing pictures. There are no, there's no coordinate system in the plane and so forth. But you will say, but doesn't alpha define a coordinate system on the curve? Doesn't alpha define a coordinate system on the curve? And it absolutely does. So I'm compromising. Yes, our curve does have a coordinate system. That's my compromise. But our ambient space, as it's called, which is the space in which this curve lives, in this case, it lives on this plane. We can also think of it as living in this three-dimensional space. It, does, it is parametrized. It does have a coordinate system on it. Without that, we couldn't really differentiate. Many attempts have been made, and they are not pretty. There are people who are big fans of them and would disagree with me. But I think that they're not pretty. So yes, if you're accusing me of introducing a coordinate system on this curve, then I agree. And so, depending on what this physical situation is, we'll actually use different letters for parameters. So I think of alpha as a generic parameter, not special in any way. But very frequently, as, as, if, as you can imagine, this has to do with motion. And this would be the trajectory of some particle. In which case, it is very natural to use t as the parameter, u of t as the parameter. And then there is another parameter, which is even more interesting, which is very, very special. And that is to choose a parameter. I'm jumping a little bit ahead of ourselves, but whatever. That corresponds to arc length. Because on this curve that's naturally paired up with this function, there is the concept of length, right? I don't need to define it. That's actually very important that I don't need to define it. I think we all agree on what length means. If we have lengths for straight things, that the curve has its own length. You'll just take a very flexible thread, flexible in the sense that it can bend but not stretch, you know, follow the curve and then straighten it out and then measure it. And that will be the length. So I can choose what's called arc length as my parameter, which means that I choose an arbitrary origin and say here that s equals 0. 
and then I choose, I have another arbitrary choice. I can go in this direction or the other direction. One of the most interesting arbitrary choices that I can make, degrees of freedom. So I'll say this is positive, and then this would be, remember we called this our unit, right? So this would, right here, would be s equals 1, and this right, right here would be s equals minus 1. So it's sine arc length. That's a very interesting para parametrization. And so we would often, we'll often consider it. It's a little bit of a crime. Because you've heard me ranting against coordinate systems when they're not necessary. Right? You will really, you can imagine how I feel about very special coordinate systems, such as Cartesian coordinate systems, when that's not necessary. So this kind of corresponds to a Cartesian coordinate system. Right? What's a Cartesian coordinate system? What, where all the basis vectors are unit length. So this kind of corresponds to a Cartesian coordinate system along the curve. So whenever possible, we'll try to avoid this, but it exists. OK, so this was point number two. Vector functions of a parameter correspond to curves. 